Welcome home. We are WNST, Towson Baltimore and Baltimore Positive. I need to come up with a new nickname for the show. I used to say Sports Forum. Just Baltimore Positive. That's where to find me. That's what I told the people in Ohio if they were looking for me uh, during Browns or Bengals season. Uh, our friends at the Maryland Lottery are putting us out on the road doing the Maryland Crab Cake Tour. The Gold Rush Sevens Doublers will be giving these away at Fadley's when the Cheat Strows come to town a little later on this month. Also, our friends at Liberty Pure Solutions keeping the water crystal clear in my glass uh, as well as in my shower and everywhere else. And and our, our friends at Jiffy Lube Multicare, keeping us uh, in perfect condition to, uh, and I should point this out, Jiffy Lube did do the oil change. My wife had it all done right across from the Curio on uh, Timonium, uh, York and Timonium Road. And I put a lot of miles, 97 uh, degrees out in Pittsburgh when I was driving uh, up the mountain and down the mountain into Ohio to see my dear friend Thomas Dolby and his totally tubular 80s tour as well as um, the great Sammy Hagar, uh, along with Michael Anthony, Jason Bonham, Joe Satriani, and Loverboy. Uh, always going to give Loverboy a shout. So I went to Cleveland, and I, I made the turn on I-70 Sunday morning, and I got this long drive out to Ohio, and I'm seeing Bernard and my buddy Munch Bishop, and I feel bad I didn't invite Ray Guy. I feel like a jerk now because uh, I found that out later on. But um, you get to the – right before you even get to Turf Valley, there's a sign that says, like, the moon, 12 billion miles, yes. San Francisco, 3,100. It's like the sign in Ocean City when you cross the Woman Bay, which used to make us laugh there. Um, and you see the sign, and it says Columbus, Ohio. And I I thought of you, Leonard Raskin. There we I thought, go. you know, there, there's a Columbus, Ohio sign. And then you there's somewhere at like around Hancock or around wherever where you break off and you can either go to like Cumberland and it says yep. Columbus. Yep. And I'm like, nah, I need Pittsburgh. And right. um, I did something. Can, can I throw myself on the mercy of my financial advisor for sure, something do really it. stupid I did? I spent a few too, do too, few too many dollars uh, on tolls. Let me tell you why. Here's what happened. Uh -oh. You have a son. You love him, right? Absolutely. Does he love you back? One's hoping. Yeah, does he talk to you <laughs> all the time or does he try yeah. to avoid you yeah, sometimes? Yeah, no, he's, no he's, he's pretty good. We talk a lot. Okay, but he's 21. My kid yeah, rolls 30. his eyes every now and then. I get the eye roll, you know. Kid's 39. Are there times where you call him and he's like, "Dad, I don't talk to you right now. I'll call you later." Is, is yeah. there, that? Oh yeah, right? sure, sure. Okay, all he right. doesn't even answer. He send me a text later. This is, the, this is what I'm talking about. Okay, so my kid's twice your kid's age. Okay, right. he's married. He's got his own gig. He's got his own thing, right? And I don't talk to him. We don't do as much as like I would like to do. He knows this, so, but we do things and he's been on the show and we have, you know, we do our thing. So, but he's, he's old and boring. Right. So when I invite him yeah. to concerts and stuff or, Hey dude, you want to go to New York and see the black crows? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah no. Okay. Dude, stay home. So, that, <laughs> so that's where I am. So I'm driving down the mountain five and a half hours home on Sunday in a rainstorm. Listen to great classic rock. I had Munch Bishop on this week, a free plug for Michael Stanley uh, and the Michael Stanley band, a song called my town. I heard, so I heard great music, Mario Speedwagon. Just, it, it, I, I left Cleveland. They were begging me to stay for Def Leppard journey and cheap trick at the baseball stadium. I'm like, okay, I got to get home, get my car home yeah. uh, and get, worked on so um you know i'm coming through like the upper pittsburghian area yep, yep. and my kid loves pittsburgh and his wife they went to an arts festival up there and i'm like maybe he's got a lunch place for me so i literally just called him from the road on the toll road right i'm above pittsburgh i'm coming into pittsburgh a butler yep. up that way seeing the oakmont there's an oakmont stop where like you can buy all the oakmont 2025 golf gear because the sure. u.s opens there next year <clears throat> i get on the phone with him in butler i pulled over in somerset because i had to get off the side of so i was on the phone for like an hour and a half Go. and he was just like telling me stories and we're talking so i don't even know like we're just talking right so so look, look i gotta pee i gotta get out i gotta stretch I gotta get back i gotta get out so get off in somerset fine okay i'm gonna get back on the road he has this he was going to san francisco and he needed some advice <clears throat> so i said all right i get back on the road and i'm just driving driving along 80 miles an hour because you do that up there yeah sure. and i just i'm scooting along and the next thing I know, I'm like, dude, I got to go. I think I took a wrong turn. This isn't Breezewood. Uh -oh. And the next thing you know, I'm on 70, whatever the hell it is. <laughs> oh, I'm on the Pennsylvania Turnpike. I stayed on the Turnpike. I didn't get off at Breezewood, right. which is the first time in my life 
I've ever been on this road. And it's such a nice piece of road. But then I got the toll report. It was like another eight bucks, 12 bucks because yeah. <laughs> I stayed on the road. But I wound up going through Harrisburg and it yep. cost me like yep. 12 minutes longer. Yeah, but, but it's I had a nice beautiful ride. drive. It's, it's a beautiful nice ride. ride. So Absolutely. do you have do you go that way or do we, you so so our history is uh my wife, so so Kathy, she's really funny. She'll she doesn't trust GPS. This is this is great. Oh, she doesn't Jesus. trust the GPS. Always trust the GPS. Wait, now. wait, wait. She, she goes to uh, what the hell was it? Waze? Is it Waze? No, 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 oh. no. Before GPS, on the on the computer. Ram McNally. The 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 map map uh, quest. Map, map quest. quest. You got it. Thank you. It's a quiz. Map quest and prints out the directions. Because my and, space is unavailable. And then <laughs> and then that's what she uses. And now, the comp you serve CDs don't work anymore. Right. And the garment on the on the dash that falls off into your lap. So so Matthew and I put in the GPS and our philosophy is wherever she says to go, we go. So, so we, we went to Australia. So let, check this out. I got, wife, I got pulled over. My wife go has turned the, the Google guys, the, the guy that talks, yeah, yeah. into the Australian guy. guy Absolutely. Like Hugh have, Jackman. To. have to. So, so whenever she takes over the GPS. Ireland. We do that in Ireland. We get Absolutely. the Australian guy. Absolutely. Yeah. So I'm cruising. One time I'm cruising home. And I was, like you said, doing 80. I might have been doing 95. I don't know. Uh, and And the lights go on, you know, really annoying. I'm in a hurry. Now they slow me down because they're pulling me over. So the guy comes up and he says, uh, where, where, are you, where are you going? And I said, Baltimore. Now, we were way up in Ohio still. I said, Baltimore. And he says. In uh, Ohio, they have the hats and everything. Yeah, yeah. He says, you're, yeah. A long, he says, you're a long way from home. I said, yeah. You know, dropped my son off at Ohio State, cruising back home. And he says, uh, do you know where you are? And I said, nope. <laughs> I said, I held up my phone. I said, I just go where she tells me. <laughs> and he says, he, he comes back, has my license registration, he goes back to his car, he comes back, hands me a warning, and he says, she should tell you to slow down. <laughs> I said, all I right. I have that problem, oh. but I did make the wrong turn. I was headed toward Harrisburg. And it's then a great I thought, ride. I go whatever it says. So I've been that way. I've been a lot of different ways back and forth to Columbus. I didn't even know that road existed, and yeah. I went up on it. Yeah. I just thought, like, when you come down the mountain, you just go to Breezewood, and I'm driving, and I'm like, I was 12, 15 miles. I pulled over the, the rest stop, and I'm like, I might as well just go to Harrisburg now. That's right. I mean, the GPS That's right. is telling me to go that way. That's exactly point. right. And We've really gone past. You know, you go out past Nemecolon. We've gone out that way and, and oh, uh, through well, the falling mountains. Water, yeah, falling yeah, water. through the mountains, through the one lane, two lane roads, through the little towns and everything. Oh, well, this brings oh, me man. full All circle because I almost All stopped over. in Latro because this yeah, there you go. practicing. There you go. So I could have done that. So, so yeah, I we, did we it. Go weekend, whatever way she says. It's like Barry Manilow did the weekend in New England back when he fell in yeah. love back in the 70s. <laughs> I did a weekend in Ohio with Thomas Dolby, Bernard Bikini, Munch Bishop, and, and the great Sammy Hagar. Mike you Reno. went back to Ohio. Your city I, was gone. <laughs> and I saw Chrissy Hines since the last time you and I there got you go. There last you Sunday go. night. I saw her do that song right. at the Warner Theater. How so, about um, it? How I've about had it? a rock and roll kind you've been, of summer. You've been doing it. I, we saw Train, REO wow. Wagon, wow. And, and Yacht Rock Review last Friday up in Camden. So I've done a lot of drive. My back feels great. I'm back on the mat. Thank you, Planet Fitness. There I have go. not had any crabs over Costas, but I'm coming with my Raskin Global thing. But I tell you, I haven't purposely avoided you or no, not we've Wendy been busy. Or... I've been busy. I've, I've had a lot of family. We've had the uh, graduation party and we coupled it with the going away party. And your kid's so, going to Ireland. So he's like, going to on. Ireland. We're a couple so you, few weeks. That's your from... summer. Wendy Brown finds on vacation. John Martin's out this week, even the guardians week. And I have all these Cleveland stories to tell him about blah, and he's gone. So like, everybody's like Bill Cole. I haven't seen him in a month. I haven't seen him since Vegas. <laughs> so all, you know, all my, my regulars around here, yeah. it's summer and I'm feeling that, but we're part beaching, of that, we're beaching and, and but we're you're getting watching ready for Orioles. Ireland. Everybody watching I know the Orioles. Absolutely. Watching the Orioles. Watching right? the Orioles. Absolutely. It's been, uh, it's been a lot of fun. It's been a lot of fun. And and I thought the trade deadline might be more devastating than it was. Uh, it In looks what like, way? In what way? I, I thought they would. Well, look, I, I've met Mike Elias a couple times, and I've heard him talk a number of times. And the more I see what he does, the more I believe in what the guy's doing for this team and for its future. You know, he w Clearly, they could have gone out and gotten a big star pitcher. 
Uh, but he wasn't willing to give up what they were asking for. And, and then I, Holly I, hits the Grand Slam. Right, right. Would the guy uh, go uh, one for 50? Did he go one for 50 the first time him. up? They fixed him. And they took him back Dude, down. He's a one one overall phenom. He's twenty no, years old. He no looks twelve. No doubt about it. The kid, the kid is just that. You know, this is the other thing that's really scary, dude. You and me, we've talked about this before. I'm watching the game, and you got around the bases, right? You got, you got Westberg. Well, well now, you, now you don't. Now you do, right. You, I mean, you now, got. I was going to say. Gunner. Let's, let's you got not Gunner. write that off. That 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 is. You got the Holiday. The Westberg thing's a it's, big deal. It's a big bad deal. Yeah, he's yeah, out until the end of the season. It's over. He's done. Uh, maybe he'll come back for the playoffs. You know, who knows? That's that's harsh. That changes the whole dynamic after you deal Norby. <laughs> right, right. But, you know, you can't know that's coming. You can't know it's coming. Um, Which is a lot like your business at Raskin Global, uh, Exactly right? right. But you got these 20-somethings, 22s, 20s, 21s playing up there, and, and I'm watching a game, and I'm thinking, my goodness, th- these kids are even younger than my son. These are kids. Holiday out is there. younger than the top eight draft picks in the this MLB year. draft this year. This year. They're all college kids. Unbelievable. And they're all still a year older than him. Right. Right. Well, Two that years was older than him. that was like Lamar, right? Lamar came into the NFL and he was he, he was younger than uh the guy, the kid that came out of Georgia a couple of years ago. We had a lot of that in the NFL. We've had like yeah, real underage yeah. CJ Mosley was a young guy. Right, they're, they're, right. You know, Ray was a young guy. Absolutely. Um you, you but, know but in baseball, you know, to see him make the majors at that age is really unusual. You see him you see him in the minors, but you don't see him push through that fast. Well, but here and we especially are. three months ago, and one of the reasons you have to pay him back to your finances. Exactly and, right. And listen, exactly I, right. Lord knows, and I, you, know, you and I have talked about this, and I'm going to write about Mr. Rubenstein and my yeah. experiences with the Whistler and how <laughs> I've been treated and how I've just I'm, – I'm not kissing anybody's ass to ask Mr. No. Rubenstein questions he doesn't want to answer anyway. Right. But, but on days like this, when they take on salary – Yep. When they take on the outfielder that they didn't need to take on. and It's kind of weird. Kind of weird. It's right. But they're taking on money and taking on potential. Not in the way the Yankees have done it. And not no. in the way that not Peter insane. Angelos did it over, right. but, uh, you know, a pasta meal of Picaccio giving away hundreds of millions of dollars to the wrong baseball players. Yep. This is a whole different philosophical thing with how. And listen, I had Munch on for an hour. I had breakfast with him in Cleveland. I'm in Tremont out there. How the Indians have handled their business. Yep. They're called cheapskates. How the Blue Jays have handled their business. How teams like Tampa signed Eflin, get right. get the money right. into him, and then just turn him into a couple of players and dump the contract well, about, if he's good enough to how pitch. How about the Marlins? Do they even have two starters left? They got well, rid of fire sales. These they got rid of everybody have, on the right? trade deadline. They got rid of everybody. They, they they traded away, I think, a dozen guys. And well, in our case, when you get one of their players and they go from that empty blimp where yep. it's 98 degrees crazy. out every day in Miami and nobody's there, nobody cares. And then and sometimes you fly into New York and you play a game where there's some people or whatever. But but moving from that to here, that can't that can't work. But to help, absolutely, Rogers doesn't you know, help your it, bank account. Got to pay Maryland state income taxes now. All right, well here you go with that. But <laughs> you know what? But you get, might get a playoff share. Hey, there's that? nothing, nothing wrong. Tax my playoff that. share. Nothing. You, that's right. If I get to hold that World Series trophy up, you can tax me all you want, baby. I'm all for it. Well, I just think the expectations for you to say I met Elias, I listened to Elias. Yeah, I, you know, I think he's wise. I think he's a- doing the right thing. He's not r- irrational. He's he's got it thought out. I heard him interviewed, and he talked about why they did what they did, who they picked. It's never happy, never a happy time to get rid of some great guys, you know, young talent that you're going to get rid of. But they didn't have a spot. They weren't going to get up to the big leagues. They weren't going to have many at bats. Maybe they'll get a fresh new start. Somebody will look at them anew. Good for them. So, uh, and you still have the core of your top, top draft picks. And man, you know, like you said, Westberg down, uh, Mateo down. That was an, uh, did you see that incident with Mateo? Yeah. I mean, and, and then that and, was and an how about ugly. McCann with oh the my his face, goodness, right? dude. I don't know if you saw, I posted out there on the social. That's a hockey player in a baseball uniform. Yeah, they're taking on football injuries the last three I mean, weeks now that the right, West but how about, happen, you know? How about how about McCann? Ninety five miles an hour to the nose, gushing like a geyser onto the, the batter's box, 
And and he says, I want to stay in the game. How do they let him stay in the game? Yeah, he concussion <laughs> protocol? What he right. Got is something? this is this not happening? But yeah. he did. He stayed in the game and he gave him Adley for the second game and the rest of the series. But then to look at him that next that night, the next day, <laughs> dude looked like a hockey player. I was impressed. And he, he had his nose all plugged up and he was gushing out the gauze and but he, he played. I, I said, that's a hockey player, man. That, that game, big respect. Big respect Luke for Luke and I spent so much time on Monday talking about the trade deadline and possibilities and relief pitching. We talked yeah. to Blue and we never even got to McCann. We got to him on, on Wednesday after the trading deadline. Right. Leonard Raskin is our guest. Uh, Raskin Global, please go visit him. Uh, empowering... Let's see, I'm going to read right from your empowering people to choose their financial future. I'm reading it right from. Amen. Yeah, right, right here. It's right, right Amen. on the crowd. There now. it is. Um, for you with expectations for yes. the team. Yes. We've talked so much about Mr. Rubenstein's money and by yeah. the way, and I full tip of the cap to you as Mark Viviano retires. You were the one that was the scoop guy that told me last year. You were the first one to say to me, like, remember Rosebud in in the yeah. in, in Citizen Kane? You, right. you said to me, David Rubenstein. Rubenstein. David Rubenstein. You said that to me last year, and I'm like, who's that guy? The guy right. looks like Steve Martin. Um, <laughs> and, and you know, Alan McCallum uh, said the guy that runs a Kennedy thing. Yeah, like so. Uh, now that we are where we are with that, and whatever profile he's with for his ego and the Arrogetti guy and the other money, whatever it is, know, hedge fund managers, right. or whatever things they do, Bloomberg, how they're going to operate the baseball team, how Katie Griggs, who's now been hired, is going to operate right. the baseball team. You know, right. she's a search engine, search excuse me, search firm hire. You know, from Seattle, who worked, yeah. and 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 I've read the interviews with her. They'll never let me meet her either, or ask real questions. Your the level of expectation for the fans when the weekend began and the trading deadline thing happened, and they got Eflin, and you know, because it it I like Sir over Anthony, four days. Sir Anthony, I like. I've that. told Luke several times. I said, you know, God bless my parents. My mother's birthday's this week, and I said, but. They really should have named me Sir Nestor. You know, I, I, I would have preferred uh, that. You know? I, I wanted to see how he spelled that. I didn't know if it was Sir Anthony, but it's it's not. It's Sir Anthony. Well, if they ever knight people in Dundalk, maybe I'll be a Sir. Maybe Nestor. you get that. Maybe you get that. <laughs> and I, I, the other thing I thought was really funny. I, this has nothing to do with the team playing, but I I was catching the broadcast with uh, with Ben McDonald the other night. And he was talking about the LSU Hall of Fame. Did you catch that? No. Hysterical. They were talking about whether or not he's in the LSU Hall of Fame. And he said uh, he's not because there's a rule at LSU that you have to have graduated. Oh. And he said he he, he needs three more years <laughs> for that. Oh. And, and he, he mentioned, um, oh, geez. Getting old, dude. The basketball player. Shaq. No, no, not Shaq. Shaq went back and got his degree. That's right. We're talking old days. Old days. The best. Maravich. Like, yeah. Is not in the LSU oh, Hall of see, Fame. See, I know a lot about sports, right. Leonard. Right. I, really I, I know that's why I said it, but I couldn't get his name. But he's not in the LSU <laughs> Hall of Fame. That, I, that I'm like, I'm not paying attention. You're just some guy. I, just I some guy am, talking. Amnesia about doing right. this for 55 right. years. Yes, but, but, but he does. he's not in the LSU Hall of Fame because he didn't graduate. Wow. So, uh, you so know, I have to think about all the other LSU great players that played right. on the football team. I right. mean, we had the, the the knucklehead running around the wide receiver last year. Um, <laughs> you, you know, we there, there's LSU's had a lot but of football Shaq, players. They did. They have. Shaq went back and got his degree, and uh, Ben said it would take him three more years. He came out a little early. <laughs> so they were trying to start a. Uh, they they said here's what he they said. He was a one one. He came out right, right on time. They, if he's they my said son. maybe. Maybe Mr. Rubenstein uh, knows somebody. <laughs> get, oh. <laughs> get him to change the rules. <laughs> get him to change the rules. But, uh, wow, it's fun to watch this team. If they're hitting, look, I will, t- I will say this. Two games this year, two games were 0-2 that I went to. I'm just staying home. All right, dude. I mean, <laughs> I'm staying home. I can't we won go. the game I went with you last year. Yeah, that's mean, true. So- but I, I'm, I'm just – I was 1-5 and five last year. Now that it's really hot out there, like it looked uncomfortable oh, Wednesday afternoon, brutal. even though Holly brutal. hit the home run and whatnot. It's like, you know, and, and I'm not Nasty like a hot. prince. I, I did two 90 degree nights in, in Cleveland in the pit, 
sweating. Like yeah. I'm, I lost weight over the weekend. <laughs> uh, so like I'm with you, but there's just something about hot baseball. I, I'm, I'm a little more princely at this point. Well, I, was, I did uh, a 98 degree day back in April and it was all fun. I didn't really want to do it again. I had my sister. My sister lives in Jersey. She's lived there for years, almost 30 years. And her kids are from Jersey. You know, they're born in Jersey because she's lived there. And my niece has a, uh, a boyfriend who is a Yankee, big Yankee fan. So we brought him in for the Yankee series. They came in. We got some tickets. And so they were all in their in their pinstripes. And First I was time smart. he came to New York? Yeah, yeah, oh, right. for, for my niece, not for the boyfriend. He'd been here okay. a couple times. But I was smart enough to get us uh, third base side club seats in the shade in the afternoon. And we sat there in the whole game. All I could think was if we're on that first base side cooking out there, I would have died. I felt like such an old man. <laughs> well, you, you you know, if if an egg starts to sizzle on it, it's, yeah, it's, it's a little too hot to watch. Baseball. It's a little too hot. Uh, but it's it, but it's great watching. It's great. Speaking good stuff. of that, and yes. like our the basis of our friendship relationship was not Oriole baseball over the last twenty five no. years. No, because we haven't Ravens. talked a whole lot about that. Ravens, um, all yeah, football. Ravens back out on the field, and Luke's out there now. And they, you know, Monday and Tuesday they only allow him to go. So yeah. when practice happens in the middle of the game, or when Lamar speaks in the middle of a game, a double yeah. header. So it's been we Luke's worn out, and it's Wednesday, right? So. Okay. Um, but the Ravens thing has less oxygen, certainly the last week with the trading deadline. Absolutely. There's nobody talking about the Ravens offensive line. Certainly not like in the old days when old nasty Nets all there was. For him, is we'd be talking about the first preseason game. Like it matters. Yep. Yep. Billick would be talking about it. Like it matters. It would matter a little bit because Lamar would come out and take six snaps and right. move the ball a little bit, right. punt the ball. And we would be, there'd be 40,000 of us maybe down there. Absolutely. Some pretty girls in halter tops and you know what? Summer, but like, still the uh, summer. Uh, they've, the, the preseason was always terrible. It's now completely it's buried. A week, it's a week away. And I haven't even thought about it. The first game's what, the ninth? Yeah. And, but the and I haven't even, like even, haven't even thought about it. it it's not even a thing. They're like worse than scrimmages, but yeah, well, this is what baseball, really back when I terrible. fought for free the birds and I yeah. raised hell and all that, this is what's been like gone, is that like I built a career the first 10 years doing radio, certainly the first 35 years of my life, 30 years of my life, July was always trading deadline, we get better, we get worse, right. we traded PJ right. Suroff, he cried, went away. let's go get David Wells, let's go sign Jimmy Key, let's go make a deal and get Benia in here and... Get Todd Zeal and I mean they, they brought Eli Jimenez in. The first thing I said to Luke Jones is like, I'm gonna date myself now, but he reminds me of Geronimo Baroa. And oh then my I realized goodness. that's twenty seven years ago, right, Leonard. Right. Who knows that guy? It was twenty seven years ago. A long time. It's a long time ago. But we got yeah. football to talk about. So are what are you thinking about with football? What's on as a fan, what's on your mind? I think Lamar looks damn skinny. Oh, he really? says he came in lean. I get it. He looks really skinny. I mean, I, I guess he's in better shape. That's what he says, but he looks really skinny to me. I'm looking at him going, holy cow, is this guy going to break? I hope he doesn't break. And then in the next breath, what I say to myself is, and this you're going to laugh at this, that dude's underpaid. <laughs> what, Lamar? How about these contracts these owners are throwing around at guys that have never done anything? Sorry, never done anything anything and now we're getting into baseball and nba type stuff with big guaranteed contracts See, here's for quarterbacks it is with the quarterbacks right it's now a job description franchise yep. quarterback yep. it's not a position it's not a per performative it's like saying you're a ceo you all make 50 million dollars that's right well dude i'm the ceo of a lemonade stand and you're that's the ceo right. of boeing we we got different we got different gigs yep, yep. and I, I i it's the they same gig but the, the proficiency level of it. Hey, I had Munch Bishop on this week, and I went and had breakfast with him at this beautiful place called Lucky's Cafe in Tremont. Had the most delicious scones and this dinner, uh, breakfast dinner thing. <laughs> so we got to talking about the Browns, and he like really, and he's an old timer. He's 43 years on the radio. He dropped yep. the mic on the Browns. He did the pregame show <laughs> and stuff like that. He just said, I don't want anything to do with the Haslams. I don't want anything to do with Deshaun Watson. I This is gross. Yeah, it, what they're is they're that? immoral people. 
and I'm, I'm, I don't really want to push that anymore and I'm done with it. And he's just like more guardians now. Like I had an hour long conversation about yeah. rock and roll yeah. and stuff. But like I was at lunch with them. I'm like, you know, the Ravens have thrown me out and it's made me, and, and they're going to find this out in a couple of weeks. It's made me more apt to think that they need more oversight and less fans. And in, in regard to the Browns, like what they've done to their fan base. And um, by the way, I like Joe Burrow's hair. I know how much you hate Joe Burrow. <laughs> the Steelers, did you see the Steelers With had the a cage match at practice on Wednesday? Did you see the video of this? I, I have not yet, but I've heard. Oh, my God. I mean, it was like it was like Tomlin was going to jump in off the top rope. What the hell's wow. going on up in wow. the A-trobe up there? That's Are they drinking some, too many Rolling Rocks? Too many. I mean, so the division itself. Cleveland's over under six wins on them, right? Flacco's yep, yep. gone. Cincinnati, I'm, I'm, dude, that kid's a winner. Watch out for Joe Burrow. Um, but the Ravens are Still perceived by everybody eh. to be a guaranteed Class 11, 12 win team, Class right? Amongst themselves. Derrick Henry getting off the box, absolutely looking good, absolutely. Looks I mean, great. but the offensive line is the question. Offensive line, look, it's the same thing as always. It's the offensive line and it's health. You, you got the offensive line. You got good health. There is no excuse for running the ball 21 play calls in a row in the championship game against the Chiefs. That's all there is to it. I don't care where you're playing. <laughs> no excuse. You got Derrick Henry. You got Lamar Jackson. You can't lose that game again. And you know the bottom line, we've, we've discussed it a little bit, but this season doesn't start till January. Unless somebody's man, hurt, that's a hell of a thing to say. Unless right? somebody's hurt, right? if they don't go all the way this year, they they fail. By the way, that's when we it. get to that point with the Orioles, if something goes wrong and they trip and you yeah. know, and somehow Zach Eflin f's up game six or three or whatever yeah, he's going to pitch, whatever. Yeah, you know, you, you know, like if it doesn't Look, go, perfectly, I will be. I other will teams be, are trying too. The Phillies are good. Everybody's they, trying. And, and my thing about the Orioles though is, I, I want to see a playoff series win. I'd like to see them go a little deeper. And if they got to the World Series, it'd be phenomenal. But these are still kids just figuring it out. And so I give them a minute. But if this Ravens team doesn't end up in the bowl, there's a problem. There's a mis- there's something's really bad. Something's happened. Because there's no excuse. I don't care who else we're talking about. I don't see anybody else with – if the line's good and they're healthy – the season doesn't start but till January. They don't know who the line is right now, and that's right. that's that's that's, that's a little true. cumbersome for that's the franchise. That's true. Well, with how much they have invested now in the skill position players, whether right. it's draft picks, whether it's Bateman getting another year, yep. Andrews is being paid to go get the ball. Likely went and got the ball. They want to give the ball to Henry. The thing that makes Lamar special are his wheels, and they kind of want to not take that away from him because we would no, take but, away that toy. But certainly they don't want but now you got, running now what a threat you got with him and Henry and you still have is Kiefer Mitchell is it not Kiefer. What's his Keaton Keaton. Keaton my bad. You my know, bad. Is he back? Is he is he OK? Mid the end of the year. Is that what it is? He's out He's, there. I saw him in a and uh, not that I see practice. I saw a picture of him with um a leg. I, I, I but will he's inquire. not playing yet. He's, he's not, not playing. Play. Yet. No, no. no, not right now. OK, so so you got to have a healthy Henry and uh, healthy Lamar. You got to have a line stand him up. But I've said it. I keep saying it. Season starts in January. I mean, I'm going to go to games. I'm going to pay attention. I'm going to watch the NFL because I love it. But, but uh, you know, tell me how they're doing in January. We'll sit down and have a conversation about the playoffs and the Super Bowl. If that's not here, they they blew they blew chunks. By the way, Kiefer Mitchell uh, came by the show at Fade. There's a right different guy. Like, that's there a different, you go. It's Kiefer. And Keaton Mitchell, I don't know him, but I know his dad. Right. Uh, Anthony. So he's right. been on the show, too. Uh, just, you know, Super Bowl 35 uh, hero there in, uh, in Tennessee. Kiefer's there. politician. Uh, well, or was. Re- reformed, was a politician. Reformed, as he used to say. Couldn't afford right. to be a politician anymore. Right. Leonard Raskin is here. <laughs> uh, I am Nestor. You can follow him. Tell me what you do with money at this time of year, summertime. Everything. People are, you know, this is the time of year you think, well, I want a boat, or I want a house in Delaware, or I want to get rid of a house in Delaware, get rid of a boat, or I want a place in Florida, or. Um, I want a place you know, in Alaska. Yeah, Trump gets elected, <laughs> or, or find Maine. a cousin in Canada. You know, place whatever, in you know, right. whatever the deal is. Harris gets uh, elected, you find a place in Canada or wherever. Go. 
Portugal. Because Go you wouldn't Portugal. be safe here from or free from democracy. Well, or well you know, look, let's face it. Free from insurrections or Let's face like it. No matter which loses, one of them wins. She loses. No matter she's which one say of the them election win. is rigged and stay in and bring hey, all of us down. How about to, your right, – look, how about and, your – how about and your and home try to planet, hang Joe dude? Biden, right? How yeah, about your home on. planet? How about your home planet of Venezuela? There, you got a little, oh, a little crazy election going on there. Dude, <laughs> right? I mean. Look, the bottom line is it's all dirty. It's all dirty. I Something's told Munch this there. week out in Cleveland. Said, you and I, in, in all the these years can get along. There's still peace for God. Hope for peace in Gaza. There's hope That's for right. peace in Ukraine. There's hope for peace in the Mason-Dixon oh. line. L- like all of that. But like to your point, the Venezuelan thing. Bad news. Um, well, you Bad talk about news. immigration in this country, too. There have been 8 million, 8 million, I saw this, Yes, uh, Venezuelans that have come to America. Um, you know, my cousin was trying to get here a number of years ago and actually had citizenship hey, I'm, here. I'm all for yeah. immigration. I just want it to be legal. Oh, uh, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not for the open borders. But the bottom line, let's face it, back to our think, money I, conversation. And I agree with that concept back, of yeah, I know, I know. making back people to legal. Our, back to our money conversation, uh, I'll give you a, a quick history story. <laughs> Back in 2016. So I I'm, I may have relayed this to you once more, but I got a call from a woman who is a uh, just a devout liberal, very liberal. She called me 30 days out before the election, Trump and Hillary. You got to get all my money out of the market. You got to get all my money. Out. Why? Why? Trump's going to win. I know he's going to win. The market's going to tank. We're going to have World War Three. It's the end of the world. I need my money out of the market. I said, we're not taking your money out of the market. Just not doing it. It's imprudent. Doesn't make sense. The election really doesn't have anything to do with it. The economy will be fine. Your stocks will be fine. Everything will be fine. I'm on the phone with her 40 minutes, half hour, 40 minutes. She agrees. We'll leave it alone. She says to me at the end of the conversation, if this happens, I'm moving in with you. <laughs> I said, no problem. No problem. A week later, I get a call from a guy. Like he's he's right of Genghis Khan. Okay. This guy's right wing. You got to get my money out of the market. You got to get my money out of the market. That Hillary wins. The world is over. She's going to start World War III. The the history, you know, this is going to be the most horrible place to live in the world. You got to get all my money out. No, we're not taking your money out. Doesn't matter who wins the election. Your money's going to be fine. Don't worry about it. It's, it's what I do. So people think that every instance of who wins an election, Congress, House, Senate, White House, that the world is going to end, that democracy is going to fail, that the country is going to die, that the economy is going to collapse, that the stock market is going to crash. And the big thing people need to do is get in the pool, calm down, cool off. None of it's going to happen. None of them are dictators. None of them are murderers. Uh, they're going to come into office. They're going to put forth their proposals. And here's what's most important, Nestor. Our taxes are going to go up. It doesn't matter who's in office. Everybody's taxes are going to go up. We are $35 trillion in debt as a country. We're going broke. We borrow money to give foreign aid, to get kickbacks to whoever gets them, so that all the people in power, in politics, get rich, and all of us work our butts off to get by while they're getting rich. And the ones that don't get rich are the ones that leave quick because they can't stand the swamp, and they get out. Now, I'm not saying the, the rank and file federal employee. I'm talking about literally the politicians. So know your taxes are going to be going up. No, it doesn't matter who wins. No, the market will be fine. The economy will be fine. And ultimately, if you're invested, you'll be fine. And if somebody tells you otherwise, run. Don't walk from them. Run from them. And keep a cooler head and don't worry about it. And, and that's what we tell people. And, and our job is, I want to say, 30% science of money and, and tax and law and so on. It's, it's 50% psychology. Uh, I'm talking to people and helping them get through their lives and their money so they can have the opportunity to go to. I want to go to Ohio for a weekend and enjoy myself, and I don't have to worry about, can I afford it? I want to go to, I want to send my kid to, I want to be able to help my parents with wh- whatever it is and not, I'm stressed out about this and worried about this because guess what? That just kills you. Stress about money is a horrible thing. 
Oh, there's no question about that. Horrible. It's and we worst. work with it's, people it's the, to. It's the heaviest thing in the world. I can say that as an absolutely. entrepreneur, business owner. Absolutely. Ten years removed from ruinous, awful things yep. happening with my yep. wife's health and um, and it destroys issues. You. Yeah, it yeah. I'm coming you. up on the 10th anniversary of <gasps> That's right. my own freedom from going to bed feeling like I was getting an ulcer. You know. That's what I mean? right. Yeah. That's right. And so our job is to help people understand how to handle their money so it doesn't handle them. And we do it with entrepreneurs. We do it with executives. We do it with professionals. We help people handle their money. And the sooner you can start, the better your future will be. They say the best time to plant a tree is 30 years ago. Second best time is right now. I've, meet, I've met people for the first time in their lives in their 60s. I've met people for the first time in their lives in their 20s. And we help them all. And, and if we can relieve that stress, I sat with a couple just this past week and I told them they're going to be able to retire. They're going to be able to live the way they want. They're going to be able to afford what they want. And they're going to be able to do for their kids ultimately what they want. And she said to me, I I've never been able to see that. And it feels, the, the, she said, the relief is, is huge. And there's not a lot of people that can say that in our, in our country. You know, there's a lot of people that don't, that are hand to mouth that are still check to check. And so to be able to tell people and help people do that, that's what we do. So you never have to worry about it. And, uh, it's the summertime and it's time to, to make that happen. Yeah. And, and that, and uh, an Orioles game and uh, whatever that's your right. plans are, whatever your beach plans are, you know, I didn't go away. And I if Gunnar Henderson will lend you a few bucks or Lamar, yeah, I, good job. Or Jackson <laughs> holiday at this point right. after the grand right. slam. Right. Yeah, you know, I, I, the, for me this summer, there weren't a lot of concerts, and they all happened within 10 days, and I wanted to do all of them, and I got priced out of a couple. My, yeah, I, mean, I love Pat sure. Benatar, but it wasn't a $200 night for you know, each yeah, for us. And, right. You know, a couple of Foo Fighters, we didn't have the jam, and, you know, I didn't get to see Sticks, but they're coming back there the same night that Lake Street Dive and Bruce Springsteen, all the same night, wow. and Pearl Jam's the night before. So, like, there's just these flurries of concerts that, you know, you can't do them all, even if you can afford them all. You don't have the mojo to get in the car and drive to Hershey, right. Night, Philly the next night. But I invested in uh, my Ohio experience. And uh, you ever been to a concert at Blossom outside of Cleveland? I have not. Leonard, did you ever go to Merriweather in like the Yeah, 80s sure. Oh, yeah, on? absolutely. When what was, was your when first was... Merriweather concert? Give, give me a give me a, oh, a, my the, God. give me a marker on that. What time frame? I have to go way back. Did I, did I see Def Leppard there one time? Probably 88. Yeah. Yeah. They yeah I, they I mean, and that, that's not the first. It was before that. It had to be before that. I okay, just so if you remember Leopard in 88, yeah, sure. they never played there after that. No, no, and, no, and no. they never played again. I mean, no, they played there was, one time. It I, was on the it was on the Pyromania tour. Or not Pyromania, yeah. it was on the Hysteria tour. Yep. They played one time. I remember it vividly. And then they did the round thing on the Adrenalize tour. And <laughs> a friend of mine met his longtime girlfriend that night at Merriweather in the parking lot, <laughs> so it was kind of fun. <laughs> it was the uh, Columbia Mall uh, parking lot, as I remember. There you go. Hi, Audrey. How are you? Um <laughs> So nonetheless, um, there was Hammond High girls. Um, if you remember Merriweather in that era, yeah, sure, mid '80s, it was before they put any of the flank seating in. They added flank seating yep, at one yep. point. It was three sections, one bowl, straight back. It, it wasn't two sections; it was one lawn and the lawn. It was just yeah, one was thing. It. Blossom in Cleveland is Merriweather back untouched. Then. Uh, how about that? The, the lawn on top. It's in the forest. It, it was made for the symphony. It's really like Akron. It's like North Akron. Yeah. Um, it's, you know, which makes it 40 minutes closer to Baltimore. So like right. going out to see Dolby, I'm like, oh, it's five hours, not six. Not, it's only a little bit past Pittsburgh. I'll get there. And um, I, I did two nights there. I did the 80 show and then I did the Sammy show. 80 show was maybe four or 5,000 people, smallish gathering. Yeah, right. And then the Sammy thing was off the, it, it was just lovely. Now people have to leave early because Every, you park on the grass and it's out in the middle right. of nowhere and nobody really lives anywhere near there. So everybody's got to drive an hour to Youngstown. And there's a guy with a hockey mask and a, and a, a no, chainsaw. actually there's really nice good, <laughs> young kids like your son that look like right. they, they have right, flashlights, all of these course. young farm looking kids that are out there. Absolutely. And it was actually a beautiful, it was very Midwestern and you know what I'm talking about. Absolutely. You know? So it's friendly Midwestern, but, it. but you know, I went out there and I thought, man, this is like, would be like going back to Memorial State. You know how I'm nostalgic about sure. stuff. It almost brought a tear to my eye. I walked in there. I'm like, 
oh my god it, place. it feels like merriweather like i feel like i'm at merriweather which gave me a little bit extra pep in my step as i saw the thompson twins and oh, wang chung and i said go. that i said to bernardo wang i'm chung. like i saw wang chung and i saw um a thompson twins at merriweather and i have the ticket stubs to prove it <laughs> i know you do you kept them all You've got them Wang all. Chung, un- Wang Chung. Listen, Wang Chung is is underrated, as is Men Without Hats. Men I Without Men Hats, Without you think hats. it's just about the safety dance? No, no they had it. to live and die love in L.A. It. They had some good songs. But Wang Chung, let's go, baby. Let's go, Absolutely. baby. So we were rocking. Uh, Leonard Raskin, he'll rock <laughs> your money and uh, doing the baseball and the football. and the said, So the kid's gone to, to Ireland no, or no? No, uh, 18th. Okay. A couple few weeks still. All right. I like yeah. Ireland. I had a good time. And then in it's Ireland. a year and year and a half. We'll see. I recommend everything about Ireland except getting stuck in the airport with Aer Lingus trying to get to the rest of Europe. Mm. Yeah, don't do I that. Don't rec- well, we're just going. That. We're going direct. We're going direct. I, I, I don't recommend short layovers in the, in the <laughs> Ireland because you will. You will be putting a lot of Guinness on your credit card. Uh, if oh, you're there you least. go. And you there will you have a hard time finding even an edible sandwich in the uh, in the Dublin area. Don't get st- tell your kids. My my advice to him, because he's good with girls and money and he's got you, you know, he's even I have even better with his politics than with you. But just tell him, don't get stuck in the in the Dublin airport. I don't think That's it'll all. happen. All right. Just tell him, don't let it happen. That's all. <laughs> and he's going there. How many years? A year to 18 months. We're not sure exactly yet. All right. Well, I'm going to talk to the young man. And absolutely. At some point, you got to do it. At some point, the Dublin airport and crack some crabs before we go. Do him he goes. And when they do him dirty, he's going to text me and say. You warned me about this. I knew I knew you went. I Take you extra went. snacks to the airport when you go to Dublin because there's nothing to eat. I am Nestor. He is Leonard Raskin. We'll tell you more about our European adventure and our uh, <laughs> our, our excellent European adventure. There we Back go. for more right now on Baltimore Positive. Stay with us.